Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in to another video on TK's Tech Corner. Today we're going to be taking a look at another game controller. Um, this here is the BSP D8. Now, before I open it up, I've not opened it, I have no idea what it looks like other than the picture on the box. You're probably looking at this thinking, why is he bringing some no-brand controller to the table? BSP D8. Why is it that he's bringing that to the table when he's reviewed products like this? Or this or this or this or this and we could just go on but i'm not going to go on but you get the point right um the controllers i've just shown they are all fantastic game controllers in their own right for um mostly for the android platform and you're wondering then why is it that with all those controllers in recent videos that we are here sitting here looking at something that we've never heard of? And the reason why is this. This here is an 8-inch Android tablet. It's a Xiaomi um, tablet which I bought recently um, and I wanted to share the experience of gaming on there with you with a controller that can actually house this thing. Now, in some of the previous videos I have brought this up and tried to stretch the gamepad around it um, and what you've seen is that it generally doesn't fit so I went on the trawl to find a controller that supports tablets and this one claims it does it stretches from 129 millimeters to 252 millimeters this is um, a bit shorter than 252 anyway so um, based on the measurement alone this should fit in here it doesn't have a USB Type-C port, it has a Bluetooth port, uh, sorry, oh, Bluetooth port, it has Bluetooth connectivity, specifically Bluetooth 5.0, um, and it's going to stretch around here, uh, and hopefully we're going to be able to do some, um, let's, we'll test out Xbox or Game Pass, something or the other that's on there, and we'll see how it goes. Now, these things are not expensive, this thing costs about 20 bucks off AliExpress, um, and uh, sorry, it's it's even cheaper. I think you can get it somewhere between 10 and 20 pounds um, of AliExpress, right? And it's promising a lot for that money, so I really don't know what to expect. You're talking about transparent phantom RGB lighting around the dual analog sticks there. Analog sticks are promising to be Hall Effect sticks. So we've got Hall Effect rockers, Hall Effect triggers, as well as Hall Effect rockers, cross join D pad, and it's saying rebound sensitivity on the, on the buttons. I'm guessing they're conductive buttons. I'd be very surprised if they're micro switches. But again, for £20 or up to £20 is the maximum you're going to spend on this thing. You can't really argue, right? Um, it supports multiple platforms. So we've got here support for Android, iOS, again, of Bluetooth, um, Nintendo Switch as well. So we'll bring the Switch to the table. We'll test that out as well. And also for Windows PC. So got a Windows tablet and you want to pair it up, knock yourself out. You don't have to pair it up. You could just use it as a game controller for your for your um, you know, Windows devices if you really want. It's probably going to work on the Steam Deck as well, but obviously you're not going to mount the Steam Deck in this thing. We'll try it out with an 8-inch tablet. Um, what we'll also do is, and I might have to take the case off this, we'll try it out with the Fire HD 10 as well. It's a 10-inch tablet. The bump on here is massive It's for a reason to protect it from kids um but we'll we'll rip that case off and see if it fits in here and just test it out and see what you can really get for not so premium money i mean where with you know some of the other controllers i bought to the table earlier on in this video just for fun you can end up spending a lot of money on these things and we all know that so if you don't have to then why should you no fancy packaging here. There's absolutely nothing else in that box. Just a very thin cardboard box. No fancy padding, foam padding or anything else other than this here. I can eat my words a little bit because they've protected the analog sticks with these foam rings. First time I saw these was on the game, so Galileo G8. We'll get rid of all of this packaging quickly as well, so it's out of the way. Um, and then USB-C cable for charging because it's a bluetooth device uh, and then the device itself and some instruction manuals so we might have to refer to this if we want to fiddle with the turbo modes i don't really know if i'm that 
bothered about testing the turbo modes out or not. I might do it just for completeness, but let's see how we go. Um, so there's the controller. Now, it looks real for, for that small amount of money. So that's a good start. Um, oh, that's really interesting. Now, the analog sticks, I like, sorry, the, the, the trigger, sorry. They seem to have a good travel on there, but I really like the curvature on there. I've always commented about curvature and how important it is because when you're engrossed in games, you don't want your fingers slipping off of there. Now, they've got a little texturized thing going on. It's, it's plastic. They've got some um, sort of uh, grip, grippy thing going on there just with the, the them dimples there and the triggers, right? That's offering a lot of grip and traction for your fingers. They're really good sized, generously sized triggers there and your fingers are not slipping off of them at all. It takes a lot of work to get your fingers off the bottom of them. They're not slipping off while gaming. The bumpers, I like what they've done with the bumpers. The bumpers are wrapping all the way around, which is uh, something I've mentioned that I like. And I like the fact that I can get the bumpers firing. The satellite micro switches, by the way, they don't sound like conductive pad buttons to me at all. Or they've got some trickery going on in there. They're micro switches. Anyway, that's what I think. Uh, and they're responsive from here all the way through here. So they're pretty long bumpers, as you can see there, wrapping around the top corners of the devices. And you can hit them from here very, very comfortably. No problem whatsoever. So I can get my fingers on there and on the triggers. And I'll be able to fire both without any problems whatsoever. Analog sticks feel smooth, very smooth. One thing I noticed about this, just as I didn't mention it a second ago, is... The analog sticks have, I don't know if that's plastic or metal, but they do have something that looks like metal wrapped around the um, the actual shafts of the sticks there, right? So you're going to get some serious longevity out of them right? and smoothness. They're, they're polished up. So they're, they're, they're sliding around the glide rings there. Very, very smooth. Um, they feel nice. They're not full-sized caps at all and they're not interchangeable. So you're stuck with um, more, uh, uh, so analog, uh, the, the caps are more on the smaller side. Uh, maybe same size as a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con is probably roughly the way of comparing it. Uh, or maybe even a bit smaller, there's a Joy-Con for size, we can compare it. And it's a little bit smaller than a Joy-Con, you might be able to see it there, but not by much. Um, they've got little dimples on there for grips on there as well. They're convex or sort of design, they're not concave. Um, my preference is typically convex, so that thumbs sit nicely in them. But they're small sticks and they've gone for the Switch style design, which, you know, should get you by. So that's that. We've got the um, start button. We've got a power button there to turn this thing on and off because it's a Bluetooth controller. I'll turn it on in a minute. Hopefully it's got some charge. And uh, ABXY buttons. These don't feel like micro switches, which is a shame. Um, they feel like the standard conductive pad buttons. Um, nice placement. They've got their Xbox ABXY um, symbols and color scheme and layout. So fairly familiar with that. Um, and then you've got the, an, a menu button there, I think, as well, or capture button. So typically what you see on the Xbox controller, one on each side. But they've gone for both of them on one side. I think if I, if I, I'll be picky now on a 20 pound controller, but I would have preferred that to be on that side just because it feels a bit more natural and maybe along the top uh, or here is fine as well, just out of the way. Uh, there's a little turbo button there, very, very small. They've made it probably so you can't hit it accidentally. But again, you can see they've crammed everything in here when they've got plenty of space here on this side. So why they didn't put the button on this side, I don't know. But then there you go. If it was cheaper to do it on that side for 20 quid, that's probably why they've done it. Maybe as a manufacturing thing, who knows. The D-pad feels okay. It's not the smoothest finish on the D-pad, um, but it's got a nice concave design there, as you can see. The thumb sits nicely on it, and it's a nice size, full-size D-pad. Again, we're not dealing with micro switches there, but we've got those conjoined conductive pad uh, under that. And it feels like it might be okay. It doesn't feel spongy at all, which is great. I don't like spongy D-pads, and it's not ridiculously noisy either. Um, and overall, that movement there does feel quite comfortable. Um, I don't know how it's going to feel when we start gaming, but we'll soon find out. On the back, no uh, 
programmable buttons that we're used to seeing on some of the newer controllers and a USB-C charging port at the bottom of the device on the left hand side um, I would have preferred it again probably in the middle but if it had to be anywhere I'd rather it be on the right just because I'm right handed and I, I don't know probably feels a bit nicer but well, there we go that's just me moaning about stuff that I sh probably shouldn't be moaning about to hold the devices in place so whether it's going to be the Nintendo Switch whether it's going to be a tablet the larger tablet and probably even a phone because that's going to fit a phone in there as well so fold four open that will fit quite nicely in there we'll see how that fits for size or something like here the old note traditional style phone that's the note 10 will fit in here absolutely fine with the cases on probably no doubt i'm not going to take cases off this video other than the fire hd let's turn this thing on and get it paired up let's see if it actually works it might not even be a real product for that price it might just be a bit of plastic who knows um so let's see what happens when we turn it on i'm just going to get this tablet unlocked um we'll try out some xbox there's a reason why i'm going to try xbox and not playstation because a lot of the videos i've been using playstation remote play um to test out the game pads um but i'm going to use xbox today remote play we're going to start off with some remote play let's see if it works so power button lights wow we have lights look at that what color changing lights how's that for a gaming vibe on both the analog sticks they're in sync i don't know if you can turn them on and off or not i'm going to hold this power button um it looks like it's already in a pairing mode so i don't know what i'll have to do to get into a pairing mode again but because it's flashing away i'm going to assume it's in some sort of pairing mode i'm going to go on here and I'm going to see it has come up BSP D8. So there it is. Um, I don't know why it's asking for access to my contacts, but go ahead and have them. Why not? BSP, you can have my contacts. You know why? Because there's nothing on there. Right, it's paired. Even though it's paired, the sticks are still changing color. The power light red has now stayed solid and it's on. And I think we have a functioning gamepad for, yes, we do, for a little money. Now the strange thing is that's functioning in a mm, very strange way. Almost like it's, what is going on there? I can tell you what's going on there. 20 pound is going on there. That's what's going on. I have no idea what it's doing at all. Um, maybe I should try and press the power button. See, I'd expect. It's doing all sorts of weird stuff. I'm just going to pull out the manual here quickly. What's going on? What is going on? Yeah, but maybe I'm in an iOS mode or something. I don't know. iOS shooting plus V3. Shooting plus V3. iOS M5. How about some Android stuff, eh? Maybe I need to start it using another button. Aha. Uh -huh. Switch. All right, trigger and power. Where's Android? Where's Android? It's probably the mode it's in. That's cool. That's fine. That's fine. That's what these videos are for. Android standard mode. I've got to press X and the power button. Right. Okay. Might have to pair it again. Who knows? I'm going to turn it off. And hold the power button. It's gone off. Hold X and the power button. Uh huh. Now that light is bringing yellow. Right. I think it's in pairing mode again. So I'm going to try and pair it again. Um. And we found it again, BSPD8. Yeah, have my contacts again, why not? Right. Success. It's not functioning like it's bonkers or possessed anymore. It's actually functioning properly. So the true test is, why am I testing this on the table? We need to get the device in there. A lovely device like this, the Leno. I said this was a Xiaomi. It's not even a Xiaomi. I don't know why I called about the Xiaomi tablet. This is a Lenovo tablet. Right. There we go. Look at that. Oh, getting PS Portal vibes here. Well, we see it lacking a bit of quality on the controller, but you know, it's cheap. Let's keep an open mind. Let's get some Xbox gaming going on. Remote play on this device. Let's see if it controls about a controller. Complains about a controller, it hasn't. That means it's happy. And look, we've got Street Fighter on. Why am I playing Street Fighter? Well, 
someone very close to me, one of my boys, has messaged me and said, why are you playing Tekken in your videos? Play Street Fighter. So, eyes, if you're watching, this is for you. I'm playing Street Fighter, remote play from my Xbox with this controller on this awesome 8-inch tablet. I'm going to put the sound up a little bit. I know one will probably be able to hear it anyway. Right, there we go. And we're going to see how it feels. I'm going to go into arcade story mode. Probably get battered, but it doesn't matter. Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's go to Ken, because that's my player. I didn't say I'm good with Ken. I just said that's my player, right? So got to make my disclaimers before I start playing and embarrassing myself here. But th this is this is doing what I wanted it to do, right? It's not flimsy at all. I'll be honest, it's not for that price. It's not feeling like it's about to fall apart. It's uh, holding the tablet very, very tight and it's not slipping at all. Those rubber grips on the sides are really gripping this device very, very well. Um, so, you know, you and, and it's got a nice thickness to it. So the hands wrap around it quite well and you could probably have a pretty decent gaming session on there. I'll be honest, you've seen how many controllers I've done reviews on. They're all sitting there on the side. If I'm going to have a remote play session, I'm probably going to be picking this up because the screen size wins. It wins over this. It wins over this. We're going to try it with this. Now, the problem with something like this, this cheap 10-inch tablet, is um, no Wi-Fi 6. It's probably going to give me some poor uh, performance for remote play. You know, probably not going to be as smooth as this running on Wi-Fi 6E. Um, so, and you can see this. This is streaming from my Xbox downstairs. Xbox is hardwired, this is running over a wireless connection and it's it's uh, performing very, very well. My buttons are all in order as well, good. All right, let's see what we can do. Now, I, I don't, I'm going to use analog stick. I typically don't when I'm playing Street Fighter, but I'll just do it for the sake of it anyway. I don't know what mode I'm in. It must be in some bonkers hard mode here. Because I'm not getting a hit in either way. Is it playable? Yes. Now... This is, this is incredible because this one controller for, you can use it for your phone as well, you know. Are we going to notice the latency between a USB-C port and Bluetooth 5? No, probably not, to be honest, or very, very, very little, if at all. Right. I can imagine some, you know, if out and about and don't want to carry a tablet around, want to stick the fold in here. This almost all of a sudden becomes one of the best control options for the Galaxy Fold because as we've seen in the other videos, positioning the Fold is not great um, with a C port on the right, ends up being on the bottom right hand corner and it's a bit poor. So why well, the bottom right hand corner? The screen hangs off the bottom of the devices. With the game, so Galileo G8, it's not that bad because it's got longer uh, grips, controller grips and, and more placement for your hands. Um, but otherwise... Um, now, um, yeah, this, these cross joined or conjoined D pads for me doesn't feel, um, feels it's not as nice as the Xbox controller, but then you know, we're, con we're, we're comparing apples and pears from a prices perspective, right? Of one, so again, I don't know what mode it's in. I don't know if I can turn the lights off, by the way. I might be able to, and I'll have I'll have a quick flick through the manual because it was nice if you want to turn the lights off and maybe they're disturbing you while you're gaming because they're catching you at the corner of your eyes, or maybe it's just that you want to preserve some battery life, right? Good thing about a device like this is it's not chewing off the battery off your phone. It's running off its own battery. The, the bad thing is when the battery dies, you're either plugging a power pack into it to keep it going or... You're turning it off or to be honest actually you could probably power it from your phone anyway if the c port is in a place where it's exposed tablet like this fantastic because um it's got a c port on the bottom and on the side so whilst the side port is blocked i could actually power the gamepad from the c port on the um on the bottom of the tablet so i could plug a cable from there to there and i'll be able to keep charging the gamepad and carry on that gaming session a little bit longer provided that i've got enough battery life and juice in my tablet. Right. Right, you can see that's working very nicely, right? I'm going to try and get one of the 
special combos out in a minute. Bumpers are working fine. Analogs, let's go back to the analog sticks. I'm not great with the analog sticks on fighting games. I don't know why, I'm just not. I find them a bit slower. If I had a fighting stick, yes, very different, but I don't have a fighting stick. There we go. So, guys, what do you reckon? Street Fighter or Tekken, eh? That looks awesome. Honestly, the screen is awesome on this thing, but this is not a review about the tablet, so I'm not going to go on about how awesome this little 8-inch Lenovo tablet is. If you want to know more about this, let me know. I have got a video on it anyway. Um, let's try out the Kindle Fire HD 10 for size. <clears throat> That's not the newest one. So, nice thing about not having a C port on these things is they clip in and out of it very easily. Let's try it on for size with the case first. It might just squeeze in, but it is a very, very thick case, as you can see. Let's try it on for size anyway. Um, I'm going to have to exit Game Pass. It's not going to go in. This fits a device of 252 millimeters. I think it will fit without the case, so I am going to get it out of the case because I really want to experience how it is to play something like... Maybe let's try Xbox. Let's just try Game Pass. I'm going to exit from here, right? We're going to exit from here. Disconnect. Quit. Power off. Let's get this thing on quickly. And then let's try the same thing, exactly the same thing. So I'm going to hopefully jump back into Street Fighter. Now on a 10-inch tablet using the same controller. Now, is it going to fit? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Now, I've got to pair this thing up again. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to hold the power button and hope it works. I'm going to hold X because I think it was X and power and let it blink away again. It's blinking. No, it's paired with my other tablet again. I think it has anyway. And this has gone off. This is a shambles. What am I doing? Right. Why has it gone off? Because the power button is on the side. I've got to be careful where I'm positioning this now. I'm going to have to position this a bit up because it's hit the power button and it's turned the thing off. And I'm going to need to do what? Turn it on again? completely turned it off because it held the power button which is shame so something to think about there if your power buttons on the side the rubber bumpers up you can see they're squeezing the device very very nicely but the downside is it's turned off the um is resulting in hitting the power button on on the kindle so i could probably flip it around so it's a bit more down or leave it like this it's actually in a very nice position here anyway it feels a bit top heavy because it's it is sticking out at the top a bit more um, I could probably move it down a few millimeters still and get away with it or I could flip it around and the device will hang out on the bottom a little bit more um, let's see how we go let's just get this thing unlocked again let me just quickly put my password in so I've hidden the device and let's get into game pass right actually no there's no point because it's not paired so I've got to figure out how to pair this thing again I might have to just go to the manual for this because um, I've already paired it to a device now. Um, I'll hold it for a little while to see what happens. See if it goes into a pairing mode. If it does, it'd be great. If it doesn't, we'll get the manual because I do want to try it on this. And just to show you what it feels like on a 10-inch display. All right, okay. Let's quickly see how we're going to clear... Uh, there's got to be English instructions somewhere, I'm sure there were. Power button, charging interface, star rise, blah, 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 turbo mode. How do I pair again? Please tell me, how do I pair again? I'm reading... All right, okay, I have no idea how I'm going to play this thing again. Um, but I really, really, really do, do want to try this with the tablet it's in right now. All right, I think we're going to find it here in a minute. Oh my God, I have no idea. Really? I have no idea of how to play this thing again? Um, 
Okay. I'm just going to press buttons. I'm going to leave the camera running. I'm not going to turn it off. Because what's the point in that, right? It's gone off. Maybe if I just hold the X button, it'll do something. No. I'll probably have to do it with one of the other buttons. We will figure this out. Don't worry. And if you're buying this, you'll know how to do it by the end of the video because I'm going to have figured it out for you. Well, that's done nothing. No idea what I've done there. I've held the power button and the and the start button, and it's uh, it's going to some. Ah, I've turned the lights off. That's what I've done. So, can we turn the lights off? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. How do you turn the lights back on again? No idea. But the lights are definitely off because this is actually working right now with that device. So you can see it's working, but the lights have gone off. So maybe if I just hold this menu button here and the power button again, the lights will come on, who knows. Uh, I'm going to keep the camera rolling. You feel free to skip forward if you want to. I know it's going to be super long, but that's what these videos are for, to figure stuff out. Oh, wow. What was that? It's got a motor in there. This thing just vibrated. I don't know the tablet. I think this thing's got a motor in here. I didn't see that anywhere. It's got a six axis gyro. Yep. That's got a motor in there. It's vibrating. No idea how, but it is vibrating. All right. I am going to pause the video. I'm going to tell you how I've done it once I figured it out, because otherwise I'll be here for the next two hours. Right, we're back. Um, slight hack. The easiest way of getting this working was I just disconnected it from the other device. So I unpaired from the uh, Lenovo and I've got it onto here. And we're just going to go back onto Xbox. It should be signed in, hopefully. Um, if it is signed in, I'll kick off remote play and we'll try out Street Fighter again. Now again, I don't expect the experience to be great. I have paired this device um, with the tab with this tablet here since I disconnected to the old one. Um, again, Wi-Fi on this thing is a bit poor, so I don't expect the best experience. But there we go. Let's just try it out. Seems to be working fine, right? Now... Mobile gaming, cloud streaming, remote play, PlayStation remote play is probably going to work not with the native app, but the third party app uh, on a screen with a device like, uh, sorry, a device with a screen like this, right? Large 10 inch device. Yeah, it's about as good as you can get when you're out and about, right? Really, to be honest, nice big screen. You're not compromising on screen size or real estate at all. This is working surprisingly well, to be honest. I didn't expect it to work this good. But then again, this is all local network, so uh, shouldn't be too surprised, I suppose. I thought it might still be a bit lagging, but it's not. Um, it's working nice. It's working extremely satisfactory, to be honest. Now, I can imagine sitting down, playing a bit of Grand Theft. A bit of Tekken or anything else. You never know. Um... But whatever you're playing, you're going to enjoy it. And as I said, it, 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 it's it got nice enough grips to enjoy probably a semi-long gaming session. I'm not going to say the longest because at some point with this style of controller, I do find the hands can cramp up a little bit because they are small. Um, so it, they're not the most, cut, like even the backbone and all of those, right? They're, they're small, they're compact, yeah. They're designed to take on and go with you. So you're not going to spend three, four hours sitting in a coffee shop playing. Or if, uh, at least I don't think you will. If you do, then great. I'm glad you've got time to do it. Um, but if you don't, then, you know, um, makes sense that you'll enjoy hour or two on, hour, maybe two hours on this. 
Um, I played Grand Theft Auto on a controller like this last night for an hour and a half. You know, and after that, I think I had had enough. Um, but while I was playing, I enjoyed it. Now, there is something else coming from the same company that is going to be a lot more ergonomic and comfortable for tablets and probably going to support even larger tablets. So I'd probably be able to use this with the case on it as well, for example. So if you've got a nice chunky case on, you know, your Kindle or a nice Samsung Galaxy Tab S10 or iPad or whatever you've got, you're going to be able to get these controllers, stick them around your tablet and have a really good gaming session while you're on the go. So um, just to try out the fold for size right quickly before I end this. Actually, no, sorry, we have to try the Switch out as well. We really have to try the Nintendo Switch. Let me just exit this. Let's get that on the side. Just see how the Fold 4 fits in there. I've got this magnetic connector for chargers on the bottom of the Fold. I'm not going to take it off. I'm not going to try and do any more pairing or anything with it. I'm just going to see how it fits in. And you can see that feels really, really nice. So, yeah, I'll be honest, at this price, even without a case, I'd be happy to just throw it in my bag and have it with me. And I think that's going to be quite nice for the Fold 4. It might... Um, might not be my favorite from a you know overall quality and build perspective but for from a comfort perspective for this device specifically yes absolutely really really good um let's just turn it off and get it into the switch mode quickly and let's get the switch on here so uh, i'm going to test it out with this here, this is the Switch OLED model, but they're exactly the same size physically. Um, so the OLED and non-OLED models are identical pretty much size-wise. Let's see how that feels. That fits really, really nicely, actually. Um, it couples or, or set, sits on the, the, the side of the controller housing really, really nicely. Almost looks like an all-in-one unit. It's a little bit, almost looks like, I don't know, I'm getting a bit of a PlayStation Vita type vibe or PSP vibe going on here it just reminded me of that because it sticks out a little bit at the top and the bottom I don't know why but it did in any case um let's get I've put it in upside down check that out it would work obviously because it's bluetooth but it would look upside down we'll get that on let's get this into the mode that is correct for the switch so what have we got here for switch mode switch mode we are using Right, you can change the grip order to enter the switch host pairing mode, uh, mode interface, press L and R on the controller, simply press, right, okay, on the switch host, select controller, change, okay, right, yeah, okay, cool, that's one, that's talking about on there, right, um, I've got a power on using the right trigger, and the light's going to flash, we'll find out what color it is, Green maybe, I don't know. Right trigger and power, green, right. Now on here, I've got to get this thing on. So I've got to go to cancel, controller, change grip order. It's probably going to detect it as switch pro controller, I'm guessing. And it has, and it vibrated. So it does have vibration. 20 buck, that's all I'm saying. 20 buck. If you were waiting for a cheap controller that's going to work across quite a few devices, I think we've just found it. Now, I'm going to do something. Now, no, we're not going to get any NFC stuff going on here, right? So no Amiibo stuff. Um, that is working absolutely fine. Yeah, it is now. Uh, I might have to just do something to, to see what the vibration feels like. Yeah, it works. Absolutely fine. So I got zapped. It worked fine. The motion controls work fine as well for the switch. So you can see there's definitely a gyro in there. Right. Um, no messing around. It's working. Right. Uh, there you go. Nintendo Switch, 10-inch tablet, 8-inch tablet, fold, phone, everything. 20 quid. I'm going to paste a link to this in the description below, but don't buy it right now. Well, if you want it, you can. 
because the next one I'm going to show you is a lot bigger. So you can buy it if you want. You'll find them for 10 quid, 20 quid. That's the sort of price range on AliExpress for these things. But if you're if you're happy to wait, wait a couple of weeks and I'm going to post another controller video um, for a very similar product that's going to work on tablets and phones, but it's going to have the ergonomics of a PlayStation 5 controller. And you're going to be looking forward to seeing that, I know. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about this pretty awesome controller for that price, ask them in the comment section below. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. And any uh, if you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner as I really appreciate the support I get from my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.